Hi guys, this is Young. So today we're gonna compare these two cameras, Insta360 Go 2 and DJI Action 2, because these are perfect for fun videos, perfect for action videos. So they're in this direct competition against each other and I have some experience using them. So today I wanna share with you guys. So first, you know, let's just go straight into it. So first, let's compare the price. So price-wise, Insta360 GO 2 is more economical. I'm not saying it's just absolutely cheaper because there are some features that actually come with DJI Action 2 that you might want to, you know, pay for the higher price. However, in absolute terms, Insta360 GO 2, it comes at $300 and that's for 32 gigabytes, which I personally thought was totally enough for all my, you know, Insta360 Go 2 videos, which I have been using for the past one year. And I never thought, you know, I wanted more space because this is supposedly for like fun videos. If I want to take long take, then I usually just go for hyperlapse rather than entire video because, you know, what are you going to do with such a long video, right? However, for those of you who want that extra space, then Insta360 Go 2, they recently came up with 64 gigabyte edition. Yeah! And that's not much more expensive. You just need to add that $30. So at $330, you get the 64 gigabyte edition of Insta360 Go 2. Then how about for DJI Action 2? It comes in two different combos. One is DJI Action 2 Power Combo, and it is currently going at $399 in the US. The Power Combo includes a camera unit, a power module, which is essentially an external battery, and a magnetic lanyard, the magnetic pendant, and also magnetic adapter mount, which is perfect for if you want to adapt it to different like GoPro modules, etc. And another combo is called DJI Action 2 Dual Screen Combo. So it comes with everything. However, additionally, there is a front touch screen module instead of the power module. So you can see yourself in selfie mode, etc. Also, there is the magnetic ball joint adapter mount, which I find it really useful. And it's a shame that they don't have this magnetic ball joint adapter mount in the power combo. What a shame. But in the box, the combination actually might be better for Insta360 Go 2 because in the standalone box, and it's actually not that standalone because there are a lot of mounts inside the box, you do get that Insta360 Go 2 camera, charge case, one lens guard, which I find it really useful just in case. You know, I've been using it for a couple of years, nothing ever broke. And then there's a magnetic pendant, pivot stand, which I find it really useful if you want to stick it to the glass, inside a car, etc and also easy clip which you can mount it on your cap super convenient to use if you want to use the first person view and also there is a type c charge cable as well so inside the box as you can see the different thickness i do find that this is a little bit more equipped in terms of stuff that you don't have to buy extra but in both cases there might be some accessories that you want to buy extra for example if you want to go diving and you want to use these cameras and both of them are waterproof but if you want to go really deep diving into the water then you might want to get that extra waterproof case. So in DJI's case, I do find the extra accessories such as the waterproof case at $65 and also a macro lens at $79, the headband at $35. I do find them a little bit more expensive. However, with Insta360 Go 2, some of the adapter bundles and also dive case at $39 and also some other extra accessories such as the power mount, which is going for $20.99. So with the power man, you can charge the camera while it's shooting and you can also transfer the data onto your computer with the power cable. So Insta360, they are making our lives a bit easier with producing new mounts for one of their key products. And battery life is a little bit interesting because there is that overheating issue which I'm thinking maybe I'll make a separate video in detail. However, just let's quickly look at the battery life. So Insta360 Go 2, a standalone camera, it does last for up to 30 minutes. However, if you put it into the charge case, charging case, which is also 
a remote control controlling the camera feature function and everything the total will last 150 minutes DJI Action 2 does seem to have a longer battery time so this one on standalone it does last up to 70 minutes however if you put in the extra touch screen extra battery then it should in total last 160 minutes they do last almost similar amounts of time however there has been some overheating issue which i will go in more detail in another video because i think it's such an important topic but yes with dji action 2 it does overheat and basically i can't use up all that battery time in one go no no because overheating they actually give you a warning and it will stop recording instantly ah! Insta360 Go 2, it does heat up when you continuously use it for like say 15 minutes or longer. However, it does continue to shoot. This one stops, this one doesn't stop. So that's something for you to consider because I think this makes DJI Action 2. Hmm. So without the charging case, they are super tiny, they're not terrifying, they look like toys. So this one is super duper tiny, you can see it comes at 26.5 grams. This one comes at 56.6 grams, so this is almost double the weight compared to this one. However, yeah, they are both super duper tiny. And also in terms of outlook, which design do you prefer? I think it's personal preference. This is super duper cute. This is a bit more macho looking. It does have this nice sort of manly design with this gray aluminium body but this one does have the extra lens guards but with DJI Action 2 you can include a lanyard if you want it will be safer that way and within the both super tiny camera size they come with the internal storage so both of them 32 gigabytes however this one does have the additional 64 gigabyte option all internal but with DJI Action 2 if you stick this and then if you put in the SD card, then you can expand it all the way up to 256 additional gigabytes in this front touchscreen module. However, yeah, there is overheating issues. So I'm not sure whether you're gonna use up that 256 gigabytes. But now let's talk about the camera specs. So DJI Action 2, it does come with 4K resolution. So you can go like 24 frame, 25 frame, 30, 60, and all the way up to 120 frames per second. That's an incredible feature. So this one goes all the way up to 1440p. So it is lower resolution than DJI Action 2. You might be able to see the difference if you enlarge it in the 4K resolution display or TV. However, on the smartphone, I have to say both looked fantastic. So 1440p file size is so much smaller than 4K resolution. So it really depends on what kind of peripheral devices, you know, smartphones, laptops that you have. For example, I do have one terabyte laptop and also more than 500 gigabytes on my mobile phone. And I have to say lately I have to keep on deleting files because yeah, with videos you always need more space. But one killer feature that I want to talk about Insta360 Go 2 is that aspect ratio can be changed in post-production. So Insta360 Go 2, the pro video mode, it takes that circular video, which is later processed in Insta360 app and so on, so that you can actually change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9, 9 by 16, 1 by 1, etc. And then they all look fantastic. With this one, you have to do a little bit more editing process if you want that. However, it's fixed a standard mode is 16 by 9 and 4 by 3 so if you want to edit it into 1 by 1 etc you have to then go through the video editing process which may be a little bit more cumbersome than insta360 go to within insta360 app however this one you know you can go either horizontal you can also go vertical so it's not too much of a problem but one by one etc you have to probably just edit it further 
So since you can change the aspect ratio in the post editing process, you basically just need to frame yourself roughly and that's fine. However, with this camera, there is monitor so you can actually frame yourself better. However, with this little screen, I actually do find that, you know, my eyesight is not that bad. So I can actually see what's going on. I can control the camera perfectly well. And on to the final points, because both are magnetic. I have to say when it comes to the pendant, I do find that DJI Action 2 has a stronger magnetic pendant. However, because both are magnetic and they do come with the mount, so you can always attach it more safely into different devices, different you know, bicycles, cars that you're using. So what do you guys think about these two cameras? What's your take? However, I will come back with a serious overheating issue about DJI Action 2 in particular in the next video. So please do subscribe to my channel, like the video, and see you!